Hello again, and how are you? My name is Winnie Bagawa. Welcome to our sessions on vitamins, specifically water soluble vitamins. So, to recap on the classification of vitamins, we have two main parts water soluble vitamins and fat soluble vitamins. We are going to focus more on the water soluble vitamins, which are classified into two where we have the non-B complex, which contains ascorbic acid, that is vitamin C, and we have the B complex vitamins, which include the energy-releasing vitamins, hematopoietic, and others. Under the energy-releasing vitamins, we have cases of vitamin B1, that is thiamine, riboflavin, vitamin B2, niacin, vitamin B3, biotines, and pyrotonic acids. On the hematopoietic vitamins, we have folic acids and vitamin B12. And on the others, we have vitamin B6, which is pyridoxine. So let's discuss this one by one. But first, we shall look at characteristics. Of so common properties is that water-soluble vitamins, number one, they're soluble in water. However, they cannot be stored in the body, hence they need regular supply. So you need to regularly take in a little bit of water-soluble vitamins to stabilize their quantities. Excess of water-soluble vitamins is normally excreted in urine. Therefore, we have little danger of toxin level. They are light sensitive, but sometimes they are unstable to heat and light. Therefore, can easily leach when you're cooking in hot liquids. They can be destroyed by alkalis. Let's start with the first water-soluble vitamin, that is B1 or thiamine. Thiamine is more important for release of energy from the carbohydrates. It works closely for the promotion of appetite and good health, and it's needed majorly for nervous system functioning. Sources of thiamine can be from meat, oatmeal, wheat, and fortified white flours, milk, eggs, and vegetables. Deficiency of thiamine can be leading to cases of feeling of fatigue, depression, and also irritability, but it can cause a disease known as beriberi, which is a disease of the nervous system. So I hope you've gotten the main bit of B1, whereby this is mainly for promotion of energy release. There's also appetite and good health, but more so it's needed for the normal functioning of our nervous system. Then we have vitamin B2, which you call riboflavin. So riboflavin, again, it's an energy-releasing vitamin, but it works closely for the purpose of growth, repair, and development of body tissues. So it can help us have a very healthy skin, very healthy eyes, and also good tissues of the tongue. For sources, again, you can get it on offals, milk, cheese, eggs, yeast extracts, and also good green vegetables. But with its deficiencies, it come up with loss of appetite, swollen tongues, cracked lips, eye infections, and sometimes dermatitis. That's the bigger part of it. But the main part of riboflavin is to help us with growth, repair, and development of tissues. Vitamin B3, niacin, or what you can also call nicotinic acid. By properties, this is a bit different from the other vitamins. It is quite stable in heat, and it can also be stable in acids and alkalis, unlike the other water-soluble vitamins. So the main functions of vitamin B3 is to metabolism of carbohydrates again, but it can also metabolize proteins and fats, and it's needed mainly for the purpose of functioning of our nervous system too. So you can get it in yeast, in meat, uh, pulses, dried fruits, but the deficiency of niacin also seems to be more of like vitamin B1, where it can bring out fatigue, depression, irritability, and you can also have a disease known as the beriberi. So vitamin B1 and B3 have similarly like same characteristics and deficiency effects. But the difference between B1 and B3 is that B3 is quite stable in heat and it's quite stable in acids and alkalis. Vitamin B6, known as pyridoxine, 
main functions it's not an energy uh, releasing vitamin instead it's used in protein metabolism so it works closely to allow us in the formation of hemoglobins it is also important in formation of hormones and it participates in generating the structural proteins so it's healthy also for development of the nervous system but the main sources are in the meat in the eggs in the yeast fish and cereals deficiency of it because it participates together with the nervous system it can bring tiredness it can bring fatigue it can cause irritability but it can also cause premenstrual syndrome tension sorry and convulsions in the infants so that's how the difference is it's not an energy releasing vitamin this is under a different category but it is working closely for the hemoglobin for the formation of i mean of hemoglobin hormones and structural proteins vitamin b12 or cyanocobalamin so this one is a hematopoietic vitamin its main function is to help with the formation of red blood cells it's also going to be important in the formation of the nervous system that is maintaining a healthy myelin sheet around our nerves but it also helps to treat pernicious anemia because of its ability to stimulate red blood cell formation it's said to have the ability to actually treat anemia or to treat pernicious anemia so sources can be from meat from fish from cheese from offals but also you can have its deficiency whereby if you don't have enough vitamin b12 or if you don't have enough cobalamin you can end up developing pernicious anemia or the patient can end up developing nerve degenerations reason being this vitamin is part of the hematopoietic vitamin it participate in red blood cell formation but it's also part of maintaining a healthy nervous system vitamin b mainly looking at the folic acid so with the folic acid this property is that it's normally unaffected by by acid and for its purpose vitamin the folic acid plays a bigger role on red blood cell formation it's also essential for synthesis of the dna and the rna it works closely to promote development of our brain the spinal cord and even the skeleton of our fetus it can reduce cases of risk of neural tube defect disorders eg the spina bifida and it plays a role in preventing heart attacks strokes and also cancer So in terms of sources you can also get it from offals fortified cereals leafy vegetables potatoes bread milk and even the wheat grains but for the deficiencies it can bring fatigue in cases of mild cases mainly because they they influence on the nervous system it can bring anemia in severe cases and it can lead to neural tube defects if you don't take folic acid in required amounts It's good that during pregnancy women take folic acid both preconception and during the conception period especially the first 3 months of pregnancy to prevent development of any neural tube defects e.g. the spina bifida cases. And the last vitamin is vitamin C that is ascorbic acid. So ascorbic acid is known as an antioxidant so it acts as an antioxidant and is said to have least stability of all these vitamins is the least stable of all so in terms of functioning it's very important for the purpose of connective tissue and collagen so it's critical in promoting immune systems it helps in absorption of iron it also prevents a disease known as scurvy and it will promote wound healing and healthy blood vessels because it's an antioxidant again we are saying it's going to promote or protect the high density cholesterol that is so that it does not go through oxidations where can we get it you can get vitamin c from black currants rose hips green peppers kiwi citrus strawberries spinach cabbages and broccoli its deficiency that is vitamin c can weaken our connective tissues it can weaken our collagen it can increase our susceptibility to infections 
It can lead to incomplete ion absorption and it can delay our wound healing. So that's the uniqueness of ascorbic acid. It's a non-B complex. It has antioxidant characteristics, meaning it can protect us from inflammations. It can also help us with wound healing, promote immunity, act as an antioxidant. And if you don't have enough of it, then we have weakened con connective tissues, increased infections, poor absorption, and delay in our wound healing. So thank you so much for staying with us to the end. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, and also like this content. Bye-bye and see you in our next lesson.